with the Enlightenment, with these guys, when it all started out, not to be turned into a history lesson, but none of these guys started out as anti-Christian. Even, even the famous guys like Hume wasn't necessarily an anti-Christ. They were trying to reason. They were trying to think. And they still submitted. They turned from, you know, questioning Christians into deists. Because, like, John Locke was a Christian. John Locke was, Pascal was not, uh, was, he, he wrote a, a treaty he was trying before he died. A whole, you know, philosophical defense of Christianity. Um, that was Pascal at the French. Yeah, that was Pascal. Um, and as we go go along through the different philosophical thinkers and it evolves, they each just get more atheistic and agnostic than their predecessor because we go from Kant to Nietzsche. And Nietzsche was directly influenced by Kant and Nietzsche's darker and, and you know, ends up killing himself. And we got like the, the, the founders of the states, for example. What drives me nuts as a historian, um, when people, when, when Americans go super hyper, I call it, it's jingoism. It's not my term, it's a, but not people don't know the term. Um, in terms of like the founding of the US and they call it, oh, we're, we're a Christian nation, we're founded on Christian values, Christian friendly. No, we're not. Yeah. Um, we're not, we're, we're a nation founded on Western principles and Western principles are heavily, heavily influenced and architected by Christian principles. Right, but, it'd be, but it would be this, kind of naive to say that that was fully Christian and it's in the way it was kind of uh, realized by the founding fathers, it was, I guess, like you said, heavily influenced. And maybe the thought or the product of that kind of thought mixed with, like you said, some of this Enlightenment theory with Locke and things like that. But it's, it's, yeah, birth from Christian thought. But I guess not really the full realization of what a Christian nation might look like. You know, there would not be big, at all. There would be big no. differences. Well, and if you just go down the list of the founders, and if you once you start looking, and it's not like this isn't conspiracy. This is this is fact. I mean, first of all, almost all of them are Masons, which in and of itself is a cult. But even if you want to treat Mason, you know, Masonic weirdos like it's just you know a, a gentleman's club or whatever. I mean, George Washington, for example, you know, the famous George Washington. His wife was a Christian. His wife loved Jesus. George Washington uh, wouldn't take communion at church. And then when the minister called him out on it, he stopped going. Uh, and then on his deathbed, his own reverend wouldn't show up to give him his last final whatever prayer rites because he never showed up at church. John Adams was a Christian. Sam Adams was a, was a, was a strong Calvinist. Those, those brothers were great. Almost the rest of the founders were all uh, were deists or they were, um, what's, or they were Unitarians. Uh, I mean... Jefferson famously took the Bible and cut out the pages he didn't like. Right, exactly, yeah. And these are the guys we looked to and were like, oh, they were all strong. <laughs> they, they hated Christianity. They used it. Ben Franklin, they, they were all the same. They used it as, as a means to an end. And I think they all saw value. I don't think they were, like, you know, demonic. They saw value in what Christianity brought to the table. But they themselves, from their own words, clearly were not filled with the Holy Spirit and dwelt with the Holy Spirit. So to look at this country like this is, you know, uh, was at one point a theonomy or a theocratic republic or something. It's not in what way. Historically, it's nonsense. Uh -huh.